Today is a big day because while I have driven and been driven by plenty of prototype self-driving cars and robotaxis and stuff like that, I have never been in one that is actually ready for a real human being to actually purchase. But that's what I'm in right now. This is an all-electric Mercedes-Benz EQS sedan that's been equipped with Mercedes Drive Pilot System. These will be on the market in just a few months and in limited circumstances, they can drive themselves. How does it work? We're going to go hunting for some LA traffic and we're going to find out. So now we've pulled up into some traffic and I'm going to actually transition into drive pilot mode. I can tell that I can get in there because ahead of me I'll have a little indicator that says A on the gauge cluster ahead of me here and these white lights on the buttons will illuminate. So I'm going to hit these buttons here and it says drive pilot requested in front of me. The steering wheel has illuminated. I've got a nice teal blue green here going on here as well on the top of the steering wheel. And this point I can take my hands off the wheel and the car is driving itself. Now you might be wondering what's the difference between this and a system like uh, Chev Chevrolet's Super Cruise or Ford's Blue Cruise, which are also hands off systems. The difference is here, not only can I take my hands off the wheel, I can take my eyes off of the road. In a Super Clu Cruise or Blue Cruise, um, and indeed with Tesla's uh, quote unquote full self driving, you are still in control of the car, you're responsible. Mm -hmm. But now I am taking control of the car fully. So it's a pretty subtle difference there. The car is driving itself, but it still will need to hand over to me in certain situations. What are those situations? Well, for one thing, we're going lower than 40 miles an hour, so that means I can turn the system on. If the traffic ahead of me should clear, if the speed increases beyond 40 miles an hour, at that point, the car will hand control back to me as well. If it gets dark out, if it starts to rain, or heaven forbid, it starts to snow, at that point, it will, uh, hand control to back to me again. The car will give me approximately a 10 second warning and I'll have 10 seconds to put my hands back on the wheel and to take over control. If I don't take over control in 10 seconds, what happens at that point? At that point, the car will basically try to buzz the seat. It'll tug on my shoulder here with the seat belt. It'll flash a lot of lights at me. And if still I don't take over, the car will actually bring itself to a safe stop, turn its hazards on. Uh, but the idea is now that I can basically continue to do what I want to do. I can queue up a video here if I want to. I can surf the web here if I want to. Or I can even just sit back and, uh, and relax. And I can look out the side. I don't have to focus on the drive ahead. The car is doing that for me. And that's a nice thing. Now, what else can I do in the car? Well, I can pick up my phone if I want to, and the car won't care, but that's actually not legal in California because basically laws against driving distracted prevent you from interacting with your phone. So I'm not gonna do that because that would be illegal and I don't wanna be illegal. But I could be watching a video here on the screen. There's an integrated web browser as well. So I could be pulling up TikToks on here if I want to and doing things like that. But I cannot pick up my phone and that's a little bit of a bummer. In fact, I couldn't pick up much of anything. With all the congestion, the car's cellular data connection was struggling, so not even a single web page would load. This made the hands-off driving experience more frustrating than anything. Now, another way that this differs from a system like a Super Cruise or a Blue Cruise is that I actually don't have much control over the car. In, in a Super Cruise, for example, I can tell the car how fast I want it to go and the car will maintain that speed. I, I can even say maintain seven miles an hour over the speed limit and as the speed limit changes, that system will handle it. In here, the car is actually choosing how fast it's going to go because again, it's only going to work in traffic. It's going to maintain its speed based on the speed of the cars around it. So I have no control over the speed of the car and the car will also not change lanes automatically. So if I see, for example, the right lane over there is moving a little bit more quickly and maybe I want to move over there, it'll be up to me to take control of the car, which all I need to do is take, take the wheel, steer into that lane, and then re-engage the system again if I want to. But the car is not going to automatically pilot around it for me. Now you can see we've had a couple of motorcycles go by. That's something that is legal to do here in California. Lane splitting is legal. And that's one of the things that Mercedes engineers had to change for the system as it came from Germany, where it is also legal to here in California. The car can be aware of motorcycles going by and it even seems to move over a little bit to give a little bit of room. That's something that you don't have to deal with pretty much anywhere else in the world, uh, but they did program that into the system here. The system will also detect if there are emergency vehicles around using microphones and cameras looking for flashing lights and the sounds of sirens and that kind of thing. In that situation, the car will actually hand control back to me and it'll be up to me at that point to move left or right or to get out of the way. So the final big question about Mercedes Drive Pilot, how much is it going to cost? Well, right now it's only available on the EQS sedan and the S-Class sedan, which are basically Mercedes' two top tier sedans. So they're going to be pretty expensive to start, but interestingly, there's actually no additional charge for the hardware that goes into these cars to make that happen. LiDAR sensors aren't cheap, but Mercedes-Benz is not charging anything extra for the hardware. 
but you will have to pay for the software to the tune of $2,500 for the first year. Mercedes isn't saying how much it's going to be going forward. There'll probably be more pricing options, maybe a monthly tier, that kind of thing. Um, but again, that's all TBD. This is all pretty early days. But $2,500 for the first year of service. That'll give you all the map updates and all the service updates. And presumably, this is going to evolve quite a bit. There are hopes that they'll be able to raise that speed limit up beyond 40 miles an hour and also expand the routes on which you're able to use this system. But for now, at least here in LA traffic, it works really well. So the car is watching me, and I do have to stay kind of in touch with what's going on. Um, but again, I'm not in control of the car, and that actually extends to a legal standpoint as well. As the car is driving itself right now, Mercedes says that basically they are legally responsible for what the car does, assuming that I'm operating within the parameters that the car is set. That is to say, I've got the car maintained in good specification, and that I am, again, upholding the law when it comes to paying attention. I'm not using my smartphone, for example. I'm not looking backwards. I'm not taking a nap. If I'm fulfilling my responsibilities, which are a lot more limited than they are when I'm actually driving the car, then at that point, this is Mercedes-Benz's fault if the car turns off the road and runs into somebody else, which hopefully will never happen. But I think the greatest competition for drive pilot might actually be in-house. At the end of the day, as we turned against traffic and found some open highway, I enabled Mercedes-Benz Level 2 Distronic system and watched as it automatically changed to go around traffic and even automatically brought me to my off-ramp. Yes, I did need to keep at least one hand on the wheel, but I couldn't help feeling like this was actually the more impressive system of the two. I'm confident that Drive Pilot will improve, but right now, since I still can't take a nap or use my phone, I'm not sure I see the appeal over other hands-off Level 2 systems. I almost have to apologize, this was kind of a boring drive, but ultimately that's really what you want from a self-driving car, right? You don't want excitement, you don't want it to be doing anything radical, you don't want it to be making anyone nauseous, it's been very smooth, it's been very calm, it's been very comfortable, and that's, that's great. Uh, but the question is, is it really worth $2,500 a year, and is it actually that much better than a system like Super Cruise or Blue Cruise, which you can use at any speed on a lot more highways? That's TBD. We'll have to see how the system grows going forward. Ultimately, this is going to be an evolving system that hopefully will gain a higher speed limit and be available in more states before long as well. But from a first attempt here in Los Angeles, this car is absolutely driving itself perfectly well, and it certainly makes the task of being stuck in traffic a little bit less unpleasant. We'll call it that way. What do you think? Would you spend that much money to get a car that can drive itself under 40 miles an hour? Let us know in comments. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And as ever, check out Engadget.com for a lot more.